I'm John Bowden. Welcome to another segment of Five Singers Who Died Without Fanfare. In some cases with some of these videos, sometimes some of these people were incredibly missed. But this series says one thing. There should have been a little bit more fanfare for these great musicians. Here's another bunch that we miss greatly. Elliot Smith. He was an American indie folk music singer, songwriter, and multi-instrumentalist. He was born Stephen Paul Smith on August 6, 1969, in Omaha, Nebraska. Even though guitar was his main instrument, he could also play the piano, clarinet, bass guitar, drums, and harmonica. Smith was respected by so many big artists, Elvis Costello, Oasis, ACDC, even Hank Williams and the Scorpions. He began his solo career in 1994, and by 97 recorded two albums for DreamWorks Records. He got a lot of attention with the song Miss Misery, which was included in the film Good Will Hunting. It was nominated for an Oscar for Best Original Song in 1998. Smith had his troubles. He was a heavy drinker and drug user throughout most of his life and was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder and depression. It was a common theme in his lyrics. He died of two stab wounds to the chest in Los Angeles, California on October 21st, 2003. He was only 34. Interestingly, they couldn't tell whether it was a homicide or self-inflicted wounds. In 2004, his sixth studio album, From the Basement on the Hill, was posthumously produced and released. It was the one Smith was working on at the time of his death. Fergie Fredrickson. He was an American rock singer and what a singer he was. Lead singer for Trillion, Angel, and Toto, and providing background vocals for the band Survivor. He was born Dennis Hardy Fredrickson on May 15, 1951 in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Not a lot of singers can be recognized by their first name, but most people knew who you meant when you said Fergie. The singer contributed hit singles for three consecutive years for three different bands. Survivor's American Heartbeat in 1982, LaRue's Carrie's Gone in 83, and Toto's Stranger in Town the following year. In 1982, he auditioned to be the lead singer of Kansas following in Steve Walsh's footsteps. He did not get the gig. But that same year, he was invited by longtime friend Jim Pederick and Frankie Sullivan of Survivor to sing harmonies for their third album, Eye of the Tiger. Fred Rigson was invited to audition for Toto in 1984 to fill the lead singer role left vacant by Bobby Kimball being fired from the band. He got that job. Unfortunately, Fred Rigson was fired the year after. In June 2010, it was announced that he had been diagnosed with inoperable cancer. Fred Rigson had been suffering from hepatitis C, and he died January 18, 2014, from liver cancer at his home in Minnesota. He was 62. He was survived by three sons. Jerry Rafferty, one of my all-time favorite singers. He was Scottish and best known for the 1970s hit Baker Street, Right Down the Line, and many other solo hits, as well as Stuck in the Middle with You with Steeler's Wheel in 1973. He was born April 16, 1947 in Paisley, Scotland. His mother taught him both Irish and Scottish songs when he was a boy. He was later influenced by the music of the Beatles and Bob Dylan. By 1969, he joined the folk pop group The Humble Bums. The greater success came in 1972 when he formed Steeler's Wheel with Joe Egan, which produced several hits, most notably Stuck in the Middle with You and Star. Six years later, in 78, came the album City to City with two big hits, Baker Street and Right Down the Line. He also had hits with Days Gone Down and Get It Right the Next Time from the follow-up album Night Owl in 1979. Unfortunately, Jerry Rafferty enjoyed alcohol at a very early age and struggled with alcoholism and depression for a lot of years. In November 2010, he was admitted to the Royal Burnmouth Hospital where he was put on life support and treated for multiple organ failure. Interestingly, after being taken off life support, Rafferty improved and doctors actually thought he might recover. But on January 4th, 2011, Rafferty died of liver failure at his home of his daughter, Martha. He was 63. Paul Young, not to be confused with the solo artist Paul Young, who released Every Time You Go Away. This British singer-songwriter achieved success with the band Sad Cafe and Mike and the Mechanics. He was born June 17, 1947 in Manchester, England. His biggest success before Mike and the Mechanics was in 1976 with the band Sad Cafe. And the hits and the singles Every Day Hurts in 79, which went to number three on the British charts. They also had two Hot 100 songs in the U.S., Run Home Girl and La Di Da. 
By 1985, Paul Young was sharing lead vocals with Paul Carrick with Mike and the Mechanics, which was formed by Genesis guitarist Mike Rutherford. He sang lead on the group's number five hit, All I Need Is A Miracle, and the follow-up, Taken In, in 1986. Paul Young died in England at the age of 53 on July 15, 2000. He had no symptoms. Young had a sudden heart attack around 6.30 p.m. at his home and died shortly afterwards. An autopsy revealed that the cause of death was the heart attack, but it was not his first. Mike Rutherford said that Young, quote, had a fantastic voice, one of the best rock voices of his generation, a complete natural. Wendy O. Williams. She was an American singer, songwriter, and actress who came to prominence as the lead singer of the punk rock band, The Plasmatics, who were known for their onstage theatrics, which sometimes included a scantily clad Wendy O. Williams, exploding equipment, firing a shotgun, and chainsawing a guitar. She was born Wendy Orleans Williams on May 28, 1949 in Webster, New York. And in 1977, she joined that newly formed punk band, The Plasmatics, and recorded three albums with the group. By 84, she embarked on a solo career and released her debut album, Wow, produced by Gene Simmons of KISS, albums like Commander of Chaos in 1986 and Deafest and Baddest in 1988 followed before her retirement from music. During the height of her popularity as a solo artist in 85, she was nominated for a Grammy Award for Best Female Rock Vocal Performance. A sad note, she actually tried to take her life three times in the 1990s, including in 1993, when she tried hammering a knife into her chest but changed her mind and went to the hospital. She tried again in 1997 via an overdose, and in 1998, the third time, Williams died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound. That was on April 6th of that year. She was 48 years old, and she'd been struggling with deep depression. Make sure you comment on our videos, subscribe to our channel, and share our videos. Buy a t-shirt to help support our channel, and check out the list of our podcasts in the description of this video. Take good care of yourself.